What's up guys? I wanted to talk about evaporator formicary corrosion for a minute. Now, this is an issue with a lot of systems. Now, what is formicary corrosion? We need to know what formicary corrosion is before we can understand it and tackle the issue. The word formicary, when you look it up, it actually has nothing to do with corrosion at all. When you look up the word formicary, the actual definition is basically an ant's nest. Check it out. So now that we've described formicary and defined what formicary is, why have we chosen that term to describe leaks in copper piping in evaporator coils? Well, if you were to take, let's say an ant hill, right? And you had a bunch of ants on it and they started burrowing their way through that hill. And then we cut that hill in half and we looked, we would have all sorts of little tunnels going through that ant hill. Now, if you blow up a piece of copper pipe with formicary corrosion, it looks very, very similar to what an ant hill would look like. That's where we get the term formicary corrosion. So how do we go about finding formicary corrosion how do we track it down well we come to units right in summer spring and we find that it's short of gas we take out our soap and we soap everything down now I'm telling you right now you're gonna have a hard time finding this type of leak with soap so let's say we have an a coil and let's say we're dealing with one side of the a coil and it has five passes through that that a coil if that leak is somewhere in the middle buried um, soap is not going to reveal that because you're going to have tiny little micro bubbles, if any, with formicary corrosion because the leak is so small. You're going to have to use an electronic leak detector. Check this one out. This video here, um, I'm using the Testo 316-3 on an evaporator coil in a server room, okay, and no bubbles were revealed on this particular coil. I had to use the leak detector to find it. So guys, micro leaks or formicary corrosion in evaporator coils can cause a bit of grief trying to track them down. I put a little marker on this coil just by splitting the fin, just to give you an example of how my Testo 316-3 can track these down. I think we got a leak there. So how do we go about fixing or dealing with this type of leak? Well, I'll tell you right now, if there's one leak in the coil due to formicary corrosion, there's probably going to be several. We've had to put dye in a bunch of Liebert coils through the years to find where these leaks are um, because they're so thick and it's hard to get a leak detector up in there. Um, so we've used dye to find them. All right, and every time we've used it, there's been more than one leak. Check out the picture. So what causes this phenomenon of formicary corrosion? Well, if you go online and read articles about it, basically it points to chemicals in the air. In a home, we can have many household chemicals off-gassing and circulating within the air. My buddy Chris Carlson, who I talked to on a recent podcast, mentioned that in server rooms, if there's a, an AC unit and a UPS, UPS is a universal power supply. All right, it's got batteries in it. The off-gassing from those older batteries would actually start to cause some of this formicary corrosion as well. He's noticed that. It makes sense. So how do we go about and fix it? Well, we need to fix it by replacing it. All right, we don't really have a choice there. We can't get in there and braze it because we're going to cause more damage to that coil trying to fix it than we are replacing it. All right, the only problem with replacing it is that sometimes it's not that easy. In a residential application, um, it, it might be easy, but the customer may not have the money. 
In commercial, it gets harder. In a server room application, um, sometimes these coils are custom made. They're very, very expensive. There's gonna be lead time. There's gonna be scheduling issues, all right? We're gonna shut down that server room uh, for a day to get in there and do this, potentially. So we need to have a plan B. We need to have a bag of tricks we can reach into and provide a solution for our customer. And I'm gonna tell you about something. I've used it and I'm only telling you about it because I know that it works, okay? This is AC Smart Seal Quick Shot. And I know what you guys are thinking. Those internal sealants are all bad. Well, I'm telling you right now, that's not a polymer-based internal sealant. The polymer-based stuff is the stuff that we all heard about clogging up systems and causing issues with, with gauges and, and stuff like that. This stuff is not polymer-based, it's oil-based. Okay, it circulates around with the oil. I used it on a system, it worked, it didn't clog nothing. I had my Testo gauges on that same system, no failures in my gauges whatsoever. And I'm only telling you about this stuff because I know it works, but the leak has to be very, very small, like formicary corrosion, uh, some people call it champagne leak, pinhole leak, micro leaks, whatever you call them, the leak has to be very small, it can't be a big leak that you use this stuff on. So, number one, if you can replace that coil, um, if you have obstacles in your way, okay, like money, logistics, scheduling, stuff like that, come up with a plan B, and like I said, this is my plan B, Smart Seal, AC Smart Seal Quick Shop. My plan B, all right, and I know it works, and I've tested it, it doesn't clog, it's non-toxic. So, formicary corrosion, guys, what causes it, how we fix it, not BH tracking.